made some videos in the past on how to get the safe passwords from Google Chrome, but I was thinking where those passwords are stored because they should be stored somewhere, right? In order for us to retrieve them. I made some research and I found out that that has changed on the newer version of Google Chrome. And now the database, because basically all the details, all of the logins are stored into a database, is now under C users, your username, app data, local, Google, Chrome, user data, and default. And in the default folder, you'll have a file named login data. So basically that's the database that we need in order to retrieve the data. Of course, the data will be encrypted, but we have a method to decrypt that data. The first thing that we have to figure out is how we can get that database from a targeted computer. I was thinking, let's use the rubber ducky made with the Raspberry Pi Pico that I have already built in two of my previous videos. You can watch those videos in order to create the rubber ducky from a Raspberry Pi Pico. I won't follow the same process again. If you'll have such a device ready, you'll just need to create a payload in order to go to that specific location that I previously mentioned, which is user, your user app data, local Google Chrome, user data default. Copy that login data file onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. And then once we have the file, we can decrypt it. So let's start with the beginning. I will explain the payload that I made. So firstly, we are waiting five seconds after we are connecting the Pico. Then we are pressing the Windows key, waiting two seconds, because you can't know how slow a target PC will be. You'll write this PC, then hit enter, then you'll press C because the Raspberry Pico is shown as circuit Python, as with the label circuit Python. So I'm hitting C twice because it's possible that someone will rename the local disk to something else and maybe it starts with C, but it doesn't matter, you can use it only once if you want. Then we'll hit enter, then we will hit F4 because we need to get the letter of the drive which is assigned to the circuit Python. We will copy it with Ctrl C, then we will hit the Windows key and type CMD and hit enter and in CMD we will write copy the path where the login data is stored. Then we will hit Ctrl V because we will need the letter that is assigned to the circuit Python, and we will use the username of the PC to know which database it's, is this, and that database to, to copy it as a database, that db. Then hit enter, wait for three seconds, and hit the four just to close the CMD. So I will show you how this works in a matter of seconds, but you have to keep in mind that you shouldn't use this on a PC that you don't own because it's not illegal to copy someone's personal data. So this is for testing purposes only, which you can use on your own private PCs. I will insert my Raspberry Pi Pico into the PC and we will see each step as it was described here in the payload. So it's opened up the circuit Python. It press the Windows key, type this PC, it will press C for circuit Python twice, entering, and press F4, get the driver later. Press Windows key, go to CMD, and write the whole thing. Press enter, wait three seconds, F4. And now we should see the database. Yeah, we have the database stored. And now I just copied the database into my documents folder in order for me to explain a few further steps. So at this moment, we have the payload, which we can use on the Raspberry Pi Pico, which we have transformed it into a bad USB using one of my previous videos. And now we have the database, but we can't open it, right? I mean, we can open it, but it's encrypted. Luckily for us, it's a very low encryption, which is called Base64. And this is what Chrome is using in order to encrypt the data, which is stored in this database. And unfortunately for our security, it's very easy to decrypt. I have found a decryptor which is already shared on GitHub by the user Uncovered. All the code is from his repository. I did some slight modification to the entire project because I don't need all the features that he includes in it. And I rearrange a couple of buttons, but the whole decryption thing is all his work. So shout out to him. 
I will also include in the description his repository and my GitHub repository in case you want this, the simple version that I created only for decryption uh, of the specific database. If you want to see the rest of his features, you can access his repository and he's saying that he will update this project in the future. But let's have a walk through the things that I've changed. So let's start with the folder. Basically, we, you will have two scripts, one requirements.txt and two txt files. Firstly, you can see in the requirements.txt that you will need PyCryptoDOM, PyWin32, and custom tick uh, So you'll have to pick install all of these modules and the respective versions. And you'll have two empty txt files, which is fl and var. Please don't delete these two txt files in order for this project to work, because on the var.txt we will store the name and the location of the txt file on which we will write all the data that is decrypted. And on the fl.txt we will write the location of the database that we want to decrypt. So we need those two txt files. So we'll start with the main py script, which is Chrome Decrypter. And here, the only thing that I modified are the buttons. And now we have only home, save path, db file path, decrypt and exit with the respective functions at the end. We may go through each one in a couple of seconds. So we only need a custom tkinter for this to be installed. The rest of the modules are recommended installed with the Python. So this is creating the main frame of the graphical user interface. Also the, the display home frame is frame in the frame, in the main frame which is describing some things about the project I modified it and I, I included the steps that you have to follow in order to decrypt the file, uh, which buttons you have to press in each order. A display home after is a frame that I added in order to see what file was decrypted and when it's ready, when it was generated and where, because maybe you clicked on a wrong location by mistake. So uh, this Void.txt is used in order to write the file location, uh, sorry, to read the file location. And then we have the done message. The self decrypting file is a function that was already here, but I added the fl.txt in order to write the db location so we can access it from the other script, which will trigger in this script. So we need to save somewhere the file location in order to be able to access it from the other script. And here on the self decrypting pre, we are asking for a directory on which location to save the file after decrypting. Then it's the decrypting process in which we are writing to the vertex.txt location of the file that will be generated. So on the var.txt we have the file that will be generated, on the fl.txt we'll have the location of the database that we want to decrypt. It's harder to speak about the code that is already written than speaking about it at the same time that you, you are reading. We are triggering the second Python script, which is st.py. I didn't rename it, this is how uh, the actual developer named it. We are using as a process in order to trigger the second script. We are waiting for it to be finished and then we will display the home frame after, which will tell us which file was decrypted and where the current txt with the decrypted data was saved. And then the whole process is it's finished. Now let's see what sd.py does, which is basically the script which will decrypt the data. This is where PyCryptoDOM comes in hand. And firstly, we are checking if we can run the script as an administrator, because we need this right in order to, to decrypt the data. So if this is successful, it will move on. If not, it will just exit the whole thing. And we will get the Chrome date time, uh, the encryption key, which is also stored in the same location. We will use Cypher to decrypt the password. Um, this is the main function, the only thing I've added was the fl.txt, so we can get 
the path of the database from the first script. We won't be able to see the sprints because we are triggering the first script, so the terminal will show all the prints included in the first script. And that's writing all the data to that uh, file that we created. And then I just added some lines in order to delete all the data which is stored in those two txt files because we won't need it anymore for any future use. Okay, now we can trigger it to see how it runs and what it does. So triggering the main script. And we will have this graphical user interface. As I was describing it before, and we'll have to press on save path in order to choose where do you want to save the decrypted data. The db file path in order to choose the file you want to decrypt and press decrypt just to decrypt the data. If you will press the home button, it will automatically go back to this frame. And I kept the home button because at the end of a decryption, here we will have the file that we decrypted and the location of the new file that was generated. So in order, if you want to start again and you forgot which buttons do you need to press, you can press home and you will have again this window. So let's start. At the save path, we will choose documents to be our save path because there we have the database saved also. DB file path, and we will choose the DB that we copied previously and hit the decrypt button. Now it will tell us, it will ask us if we want to allow the device to run as administrator. You have to press as administrator and it worked. And the file was decrypted and you can find the decrypted data in the following file. So this is a random generated name. And we, if we hit home, we'll have again the same frame. And if we hit exit, it will just exit the script. We are going back to documents. We will see the file which was generated. And by opening it, we will have all the data that we decrypted. A lot of data actually. Now I will delete this because I don't want to have my password stored somewhere else in my computer. Mainly, you have to remember two things. First, you shouldn't let anyone insert any kind of USB device into your computer. I think this is pretty clear, but maybe you work in an office and maybe you go to the bathroom and forgot to lock your PC, and this can happen. The most secure way never save your password into the Chrome browser or any browser. I think those two, three seconds spent in order to retype the password every time is worth it because then the browser won't store your password anywhere and you're safe in front of this type of situations. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I've done some research in order to do it and spend some time and I would appreciate if you can be subscribed to the channel and also like this video if you've enjoyed it. See you soon in a new video like this. Cheers.